Welcome back to The Modern Ham. Today I have a little something more special to show you guys, a little project I've been working on. And as you can see, hopefully if I can get the camera to focus, there we go. We have the SX64 with a MFJ1278. And we are running packet as it was in 1983. So stay tuned to find out what that might look like. So as you guys know, I've basically been really do been doing this deep dive into packet radio. And I really wanted to see what packet radio was like in the 1980s and before the internet really took off. So um, amongst other reasons, I acquired a Commodore SS SX64, which if you don't know, is a computer that was released in 1983. Uh, and it features a built-in screen uh, and a keyboard. It's kind of like a detachable briefcase. So it kind of like just slaps on like that. And the idea is you would be able to take the handles and carry it around as if it was a portable computer. On top, I have a MFJ 1278, which I'm not sure what the release date of this particular TNC is, but it handles HF and VHF uh, packet, as well as SSTV and RIDI. So lots of cool little things here, and I'm gonna dive in and show you guys what it looks like, and we're gonna use it. I'm actually going to show you guys that all of this setup is still working today and I can connect out to HF stations and we'll also read some mail that people might have left me on the Commodore uh, 64 so really cool stuff I hope you guys are excited I know I'm kind of geeking out over here but let's go ahead and I just want to show you guys a little bit up close of what the equipment actually looks like so here you see the uh, SA64 it features a floppy drive uh, as well as the keyboard which is a very apparently a rare commodity these things kind of screw up so I was lucky to find a unit with one available and we also have a cassette now this cassette was actually what shipped with the modem if or the tnc if you bought it with the uh, commodore 64 and this is what would load the terminal application so that you can interface and start doing packet bbs or uh, sstv and those things so we have this the floppy drive uh, it does work on this thing but we won't be using it today the modem here as you can see it's it's kind of tuned to my FT891, and uh, this is the yellow light is a indicator light to show that there is activity, and we have the power, and that's basically what the front side looks like. Now on the back here, I had to make a custom cable for the SX64, considering it's very rare to find such a thing, you know, in 2024, 40 years later. Uh, so I made that to connect to the user port of the SX64. Uh, and I also had to make my own cable for the FT891. Uh, obviously, I don't think the thing was around at the time. This right here it actually features two different radio ports if I wanted to connect another one. It is all running basically to this FT891. So that's what I'm going to be using when we power it up. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Let's see how she looks. All right, let's go ahead and hit the on switch here on the back. And you're going to see the TV spring to life here. Unfortunately, you know, trying to capture these uh, CRTVs can be hit or miss because of the refresh rate of the camera. So I'm going to try my best here to uh, make it work for you guys. All right, so here at the prompt, let's go ahead and let's load the files up here so we can load the correct terminal application. All right, and we're going to do a list and we're going to move up to this Multimon. There are different applications here. Um, that was used with this software. And I've tried just about every single one of them and this is really just the one that I like the most. And unfortunately, I don't have time to show you guys all of the applications. I'm at least gonna open up the terminal controller and we're gonna actually see it work, right? Now the application's actually run, uh, loading here and sometimes that just takes a few minutes, obviously. Uh, you're talking about a computer from 40 years ago, right? Uh, so once that's loaded up, I'll go, and it is now, I can, uh, Go ahead and issue the run command. And that's going to start the application. And really, the application is just used to get in and you know manage the node. So it's, it's a terminal application, right? It's really made to talk to this TNC. The application's loaded, and it is a MFJ multi-mode communication terminal program. So it's actually made by MFJ. Let's go ahead, and I'm gonna get the camera back in here so you guys can see me actually open up and check out the BBS. All right, so we're gonna hit five. And it's going to load some additional files there. And we're going to go ahead and open the terminal. 
Now, usually it's going to print out everything that I haven't seen since the last time I turned it on. So the text that you're seeing scrolling through the screen, this thing, since last time I powered it on, it saves this stuff into memory, and it makes it so that once I load it back up, it'll kind of show me, right? But to get into the BBS or the mail software, I type in this sysop command. And obviously it says here, awesome, we have mail. So we're going to hit R and let's read the mail. And if I do this, it's actually going to print out all of the mail that I currently have that's stored on the system, uh, which I think, let's see. I've got three messages. None of them are new. I've read them all. But uh, you guys kind of get the idea, right? So I have these messages, and I can, you know, I can mail these guys back, right? But I just wanted to show you that uh, people have got into it, and they are actively using this system, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead, and let's connect out to somebody else. Uh, let's do the mherd, and that's going to show us what call signs have uh, recently been heard. I see a VE1JOT. Uh, I don't see a dash 7 there, so I don't know. We're getting a strong signal in. It could be one of those guys connecting back. I'm going to try VE1JOT's dash 1. That might be his BBS with any luck. All right, so we actually did get connected to VE1JOT. The signal's not perfect. It's there, but it's definitely uh, kind of wavering. Let's give that a moment here and see what it comes back with. I'm going to assume that I'm in his BBS now. Oh, there we go. So you have zero messages, and now it's going to exchange some of that, uh, you know. Oh, this is actually a JNOS terminal, right? So that's pretty cool. And it's showing a giant list of... I think these are just a giant list of shortcut for commands. I have no idea what e each of these are for uh, JNOS, but I assume that I might be able to send him a message. Let's try it out. Well, our radios are going to have to do the thing, right? They're communicating back and forth. I don't know uh, JNOS's syntax, but I'm going to try to send him a message. I'm still getting some feedback. What's this? Let's send this and see what happens, right? That's the most we can do. Okay, so it is asking for the subject. I'm going to say hi from E-Town, Kentucky. Enter a message in with slash EX. Um, let's say sending hi from my Commodore, we'll just say Commodore 64. We'll keep it short. Um, thanks for the note. And so I'm going to hit enter here, and usually you'll stop the message with the slash EX. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that slash EX. And hopefully, as long as my packets go through, that should kind of summarize the message. There we go. So our message has been sent. Everything went through well. So as you can see, that's pretty much it. Now, packet radio wasn't the only thing that this system could do, and it wasn't the only thing that the MFJ terminal uh, actually uh, had available either. You could actually do SSTV messaging. Now, receiving the SSTV, it could use like robot, and I think it was like 36, or the very slow modes, right? So it wasn't anything fancy. But to send the SSTV message, you actually had to have some type of fax system connected to your Commodore 64, and, I get, and this is way before my time. I'm not sure how it works. But basically the fax would come in and you would have to uh, send it through the program that way. But all in all, uh, you guys saw this stuff still works. Um, now would I recommend buying a MFJ 1278 and a Commodore SX64 to do packet radio? No, Direwolf is still definitely better. But I just wanted to show you guys that this is what packet looked like before the internet. This is what... Uh, Basically, packet was when things first started before the internet kind of killed it off. And those systems are still live today. You can, uh, it's backwards compatible. Even if you use Direwolf and you've been following along this series, there are systems out there that are running things like this MFJ and they're completely backwards compatible. You can still get out to them and there are, is still activity out there. So if you don't have a packet node, 
check out the packet radio series. Uh, I can get you guys up to speed on connecting to nodes or hosting your own. And I just wanted to show a little bit of history here because I had to jump through a lot of hoops to figure out how to get all this system you know, working. I had to figure out how to make the cables myself uh, and hunt for um, you know, manuals from decades ago. And so if you are interested in that type of stuff, if, if at all, leave me a comment down below. And if you've done packet on these types of systems, please let me know in the description what kind of computer, computer you ran, what kind of TNC, and what kind of radio you used. And uh, yeah, I'd be really interested to know. Thank you guys for, uh, so much for watching. I uh, hope you found it interesting. And that's pretty much it. 73 to you.